In this video, we're going to learn about the execution order of the various functions in Unity. There are many functions that execute during the runtime of a Unity application, and you may have already noticed a few of these. They include the start and update function, which are generated by default when creating a new Unity script. There are many more of these functions which all do different things, and it can be important to know what order they're executed in and why they're needed. This is a helpful flowchart from the Unity manual, which shows the lifecycle of these functions in a Unity script. Some of these functions are called continuously at every frame, and not understanding their order can often lead to bugs in your application. There's too much on this flowchart to cover in one video, so I've reduced the flowchart to only include some of the functions that you will likely encounter as a Unity beginner. So, Let's go through this flowchart and describe the functions with some helpful demonstrations along the way. Most of these functions aren't generated by default, but you can use them simply by creating the function yourself in a mono behavior. Let's start with the awake function, which is called when a scene starts for each game object in the scene. If the game object is not activated during the startup of a scene, then it's not called until it's made active. Because the awake functions for different game objects are invoked in a random order, it's often used to initialize variables that are then depended on by other game objects. These variables could then be used in a function that comes later in the lifecycle. Moving on, we have the onEnable function. This is only called if a game object is active and just after the game object is enabled. This also happens when a mono behavior instance is first created. This is a function to place code you need executed when a game object is disabled and then enabled again during the scene. Now onto the start function. This is called before the first frame update and only if the script is enabled. For all game objects currently in a scene when it starts, the start function is guaranteed to execute on all scripts before the update functions which are listed below. However, this isn't the case for game objects which are added to the scene afterwards. The start function is another place you can handle initialization, particularly for variables which are dependent on other game objects. These will be ready for use if you initialize them using the awake function. Onwards to different update functions. These update functions are meant for different things and are called according to different timings. The fixed update function can be called multiple times per frame if the frame rate is slow, or it can skip frames if the frame rate is very high. All physics calculations occur immediately after fixed update, so it's the best function to place any code that manipulates anything that needs to be accounted for by the physics engine. The fixed update function is almost guaranteed to be executed at fixed intervals, so you don't need to multiply any values by time.delta, which keeps the time between the current and previous frame. Now onto the update function. The update function is called at every frame. It's where the majority of the logic always ends up, and the Unity manual even refers to it as the main workhorse function for frame updates. This is also where you want to handle any input logic, because if you put it in the fixed update function and it isn't called at every frame, the update could be missed. The execution rate of the update function can be slower or faster than the fixed update function, depending on the graphics load. Next is the late update function. This is called once per frame, but after the update function is finished. A common use for the late update function is to update camera movement and rotation calculations. This way, you can make sure a character is moved in the previous function before tracking its position for camera updates. Next is the onApplicationQuit function. This is only called on all game objects before the application is quit, otherwise it's not executed. It's also executed when the user stops the play mode in the Unity editor. Then we have the onDisable function, which is executed when a mono behavior becomes disabled or inactive. And finally, we have the onDestroy function, which is called when a game object is destroyed directly 
for example, through the game object destroy function, or when the scene or application ends. Now let's run this application and observe the Unity console to see what happens. We can see the order in which everything is called, and we can also see that the update function and late update function is called more often than the fixed update function. When we disable and enable the script using the inspector window, we can see the relevant code executes as well. When we delete the game object from the scene, we can also see that the onDestroy function has been called. That's it for the execution order of various functions in Unity.